Hello again, whiskey friends. Thanks for joining everybody for another whiskey review. Today, quite excited to be getting into today's video. We are going to be talking about this release from Knob Creek. This is a boo rye, uh, which they're not allowed to say because I'm pretty sure that is trademarked. But it is a bourbon rye blend of their nine-year bourbon and their seven-year rye. We'll get into the proportions and all of the details of this, but been real impressed with Knob Creek this year. Two big standalone releases have come out, the 10-year rye and then this one, the bourbon rye blend. What I'm going to get into a little bit in this video is which one of those I prefer and which one of those I would recommend that you pick up if you're debating which one of those to get off the shelf. So thank you for joining today, Whiskey Friends. Let's kick off the show. So yes, as mentioned off the top there, Knob Creek has been coming out with some good new shelfer-like releases. You know, I don't know how wide the distribution on the 10-year rye and this boo rye blend is, but I've been seeing pictures, at least in all the Facebook groups, all around the country. So hopefully those are in your area. I think this one might be getting around more so even than that 10-year rye. But what we are looking at is a blend of bourbon and rye. Once again, the bourbon is nine years old and is about 30% of this blend. And then the rye is seven years old and 70% of the blend. Now, for the most part, I mean, the mash bill on Knob Creek is very high rye. And then the rye that they have is very low rye. So you're still looking at something that's like kind of in between there, depending on the proportions. I wouldn't be surprised in the end if the rye content of this actually fell below 50% of the blend once it's all said and done. So let's get into the stats here. First off, this costs $65. So this is a new kind of like standard release. It's right there at $65. Very similar to the single barrel nine-year Knob Creek bourbons, you know, that I think are usually about $59.99. So it's right there. The proof on this one is 113. I do think that's something that helps it stick out a little higher then the 10-year rye that just came out that was 100 proof, and then age stated at seven years. Now, it's the blend of the seven-year rye and the nine-year bourbon, so seven years gets the age statement. So let's go through the tasting notes here. We're going to go through the nose, the palate, and the finish. going to go through the flavors, and I'm going to describe the experience there and what I enjoy so much about this particular pour. Thank you for joining, everybody. Let's get into this. The, the nose always gives me an initial impression of essentially a very spice-leaning apple pie. Spicy in terms of just the cinnamon and the different uh, spices that would be in that apple pie filling, but also the crust itself having a good load of spice on it. There's also a good layer of vanilla here, a good vanilla punch, you know, essentially like a little dollop of vanilla ice cream next to that apple pie. The more I sit with this one, though, the rye does emerge and there's going to be a lot of pepper on the back end of the nose. So it's got this whole sweet and spicy thing going on. So I really, really enjoy that. For me, this nose gets good. Thumbs up. All right, let's get to the taste. Oh, that's a good tip. Very impressed with how rich and oily this is, particularly up front. Great, great mouthfeel. They nailed that in the blend. Uh, even the age of it, you know, it, even up front, it can come across a bit tannic, uh, really feeling the weight of that nine year bourbon, even though it's only 30% of the blend. It almost feels the same to me as the 10 year rye did in terms of kind of the age and that heft that is felt up front. Initially, my first thoughts were all about the spice and the pepper that I was talking about on the nose. You get that spice up front. And then what enters the picture here, and I think it's going to go throughout each step of the way as I'm describing it. There's an orange zest that I do get 
quite a bit on Knob Creek Rise in general, but the orange zest does come popping through, even though I really don't get that on the nose, it starts popping through on the palate. Also getting a blast of vanilla as well. So that part of it's kind of matching the nose. So let's get into uh, mid palate here. Yeah, and by mid palate, man, does it really come together beautifully. Uh, more of that apple pie sensation right there side by side with the orange zest. I think those are the two flavor notes that I'm just going to keep going back to once again with that vanilla wrapped in there as well. So apple pie, the vanilla, orange zest. It's, it's a combination of those three flavors. And still, you know, while I do tie that with the apple pie in my mind, it is spicy. It is spicy in terms of baking spices. It is also spicy in terms of the rice spice and the pepper flavors too. So that's where it does give that nice balance too, to all that sweetness I just mentioned. So when it comes to the palate, again, I'm pretty impressed. I'm giving this one a thumbs up. Let's get into the finish. On the finish, I will say the those tannic notes that I was mentioning at the, the front of the palate do return on the finish. I don't dig that so much. It kind of drifts a little too tannic for me. But at least it's counterbalanced by all the sweet flavors. Again, very similar to mid-palate. We're talking mostly about the apple pie flavors. That orange zest comes through even more. And the finish is actually where the typical Jim Beam nuttiness ends up coming into play. That's actually very subdued throughout the entire process until you get to the finish and then it has a blast there. Uh, the other thing I think is interesting too, there's a hint of chocolate on the tail end of the finish as well. So right about now is when I'm actually getting the chocolate. So at least it has these layers and it has these waves and some unexpected twists and turns. Let me go in for one more sip, see if I have anything else there. I think that about describes it. So all in all then with the finish, given that a thumbs up as well. So three thumbs up across the board. I love how this thing hits every step of the way of the process. Great flavors, interesting things going on, rich and oily. You really can't go wrong. So going into this then, let's get into the final scores. Here on the channel, we do have a whole bunch of metrics behind the scenes, but ultimately it can get summarized into a flavor score you know, how enjoyable were the flavors, an experience score, more about how the mouthfeel was, how complex those flavors were, how long the finish is, and then the value score, you know, value for the price paid. So when it comes to flavors, gave it an 80 out of 100, experience an 82, and then the value, 9 out of 10. Now, I did ding it a little bit on value, did the same thing to the 10-year rye, you know, I think I'd be more comfortable with this one around a $55, $60 mark. Very similar to the 120 proof nine-year bourbons. I'd be right there with it. So the fact that it's a little more, not a deal breaker, just brings it down a little bit in value. So then all in all, we are talking about an overall score of an 82 out of 100. Very, very respectable score. That comes in uh, 30 out of 54 reviews done this year. So not a top bottle that I'll be talking about at the end of the year, but I will say it's a bottle that I gravitate towards more as a daily or more as something that I'm just going to drink and enjoy and not feel too much pressure on the fact that I'm drinking it, maybe crushing this bottle. Also one that I've been sharing with people. Always excited to share something like this because I know other people can find it versus some of the other things that I talk about that are so obscure. So excited to talk about something that's got a wider release. And once again, thumbs up on this one. And I graded this higher than I did the Knob Creek Rye 10 year, which I think I gave a 79 or an 80 by comparison. And then all time, 92 out of a 213. So while it's in the back end of what's happening this year, of course, the last three years, it's still doing pretty good. Still an upper echelon pour. So don't shy away from this one, particularly if you like Knob Creek's bourbons. So that concludes the review for the Knob Creek Bourbon Rye Blend. Once again, a recommend on my end. Really do like this pour. And I think it sticks out to me too as one of the better releases this year when it comes to the wider standard releases coming from some of the distilleries. 
going to do a video on that later. That's actually a question that I've gotten my hands on. What are some other ones that are more highly available that I'd recommend that are new releases this year? So keep an eye out for that video. So if you've had this, let me know what you think in the comments, whether you agree with the tasting notes, with the overall review, if this thing is hitting as strong for you as it does for me. And I'd love to hear what you'd like us to review next on the channel too. Always looking for requests. So thank you for joining today, whiskey friends. We'll catch you on the next whiskey review. Goodbye, everybody. Hey Jeff, just be friends with me. But you have these whiskey friends. And you say hello again. Oh, Jeffrey, you should just be friends with me. But you have these whiskey friends.